says currently Kenya doesn't need any politician. But other options like Dr. Kuru Eko to come in too late and find Kenyans have already made a choice between evil and evil. Mm. <laughs> so, so, so you see Trevor, and that's where the problem is in this country. Because Kenyans, first of all, don't even analyze political lies they are being told out there. So somebody can lie to you, and you know they are lying to you. I mean, and, and to be honest with you, I think I've come to the conclusion, Trevor, that uh, when it comes to politics in Kenya, I think witchcraft is real. <laughs> and I never used to believe in witchcraft, but political witchcraft is very real in Kenya. Because how is it that people can lie to you openly, advance lies, promises they, they promised you, and uh, nothing has happened. For example, let's analyze the so-called two big names what they have promised. Raila Molo Dinga comes and says, I'll give you guys 6,000 6, every, is it every month? Yes. Every month. He has not told us where he'll get that money from. And he is not talking about, we never had them talk about how they will stop corruption or theft of public money. William Ruto, on the other hand, who was uh, uh, promising Kenyans uh, in six months, in three months, a uh, dam in Kimarinya, I don't know where, or I'll even bring bundles. He promised the young people bundles at world level. You know, now they are coming to tell Kenyans in the 21st century, the symbol of the economic liberation is a wheelbarrow. So you give my people, say, in Capedo or, uh, you know, Lokitang, wheelbarrows. What are they going to do with it, with a wheelbarrow? Then the other one comes and talks about Azimio La Umoja, the dream of oneness. This, if you analyze it critically, Azimio La Umoja in this country was betrayed just, just right after independence. And there has never been any attempt to actually bring Kenyans together. In fact, from 2018, we started going, going really south in this country. The political animosity and ethnicity became so much that you know, Kenyans are beginning to lose hope. So I don't think it is too late for any Kenyan today, leave alone a Kuro court. After all, I mean, house guys have been trying to do uh, what we can as a political party from 2017 up to 2019, 2020, when they political pests came into our party and infiltrated. Uh, you know, our party, because we were bringing an idea called Punguza Mizigo Kenya against BBI that was actually going to undermine the constitution of this country and the rule of law and advance political mobilization. We, we presented a better idea, but Kenyans didn't, don't analyze. So I think even as we go forward, eh, let Kenyans tell us, you know, of all these people who have better policies. You know, I was Dr. told... Dr. Kuru, you see, have him, a very really low you, opinion of Wanjiru, Kenyans. You Wanjiru, no, no, let him finish. Don't I'll, I'll give you a they chance. Don't, don't. Their, Wanjiru, their I'll give you a chance yeah. to respond. Let him finish. No, no, no. Just let him Wanjiru. finish huh? the line honest, of thought. I'm, okay, I'm also advancing. You said Kenyans don't I'm analyze. Also, I'm, but it's true. I'm also advancing mm -hmm. your own argument earlier that the leadership you see in this country today is a reflection of us. Why? And I'm saying this because we don't question the lies that we are being told as a people so that we can make political choices. Because when we go to the vote, let, let, him, finish. Finish. let him finish. That let wasn't him finish. my argument. That wasn't my argument. Let, okay. finish. let, that was let me make it mine. Let, let me make, it mine. Let him finish, let me make my argument. Yeah. So it is my argument that if Kenyans were able to actually look, interrogate individuals, and I say this, why? Because one of the geniuses of Kenya's constitution, Trevor, is chapter six. Leadership and integrity. integrity yeah. And Kenyans, and I was in the Committee of Experts, uh, and the Wanjiro, you are, you are in the civil society, if I remember that time very well, and he participated actively. One of the things that Kenyans said, and this, by the way, I've gone to a number of countries now to try and help with the constitution making process, including South Sudan. And people love uh, the Kenyan constitution, how progressive it is. And one of the things they keep on asking, why did you guys come with a chapter called uh, Leadership and Integrity? And by the way, it's the only, I think, constitution in the world with a, that has dedicated an entire chapter on leadership and integrity. Why? Because Kenyan said one of the failures of our society today yeah. is the lack of leadership. And therefore, they wanted a certain type and character of leaders. Yeah. Now, to my point, Kenyans are failing themselves. You give yourself a good formula, a good chapter called leadership and integrity, but then when thieves and smugglers and whatever uh, rapists come and present before you for leadership, you keep on saying, I'd rather pick the rapist or the, or, or the thief. So that's why I'm saying we need to interrogate because when we go to the polling station, we are making a choice. Okay. Yeah, we're making a choice. All right. Today, in political rallies, political rallies, you have a government on the one hand that tells you wear masks in public. Then Kenyans throng there at the risk of being infected by this pandemic with a government that is not uh, mass testing them. 
that's ma not mass vaccinating them. Uh, health, sector, health, health, health services has failed in this country. So I think it's a problem of Kenyans. Going back to Anne's point, if it's about bread and butter, why do you leave your home to go to a rally on a weekday when you should actually be struggling to put food on your table? Okay. So yes, to some extent. To be honest with you, I blame Kenyans on the one hand, but I also blame the leadership that is failing yeah. to give proper guidance to the people. Okay. Yeah. When you read 